This is a reading of Is the American Dream Still Possible by David Walchensky. Uh, this was originally written in Parade Magazine in October 2014. To be middle class in America once meant living well and having financial security. But today that comfortable and contented lifestyle is harder to achieve and maintain. Parade commissioned Mark Clemens Research, Inc. to survey Americans nationwide about their finances and outlook for the future. Contributing editor David Walchensky, author of recent articles Where Your Tax Dollar Go and on Pork Barrel Spending, interprets the results. The traditional American dream is based on the belief that hardworking citizens can better their lives, pay their monthly bills without worry, give their children a start to an even better life, and still save enough to live comfortably after they retire. But many average Americans still struggling, squeezed, squeezed by rising costs, declining wages, credit card debt, and diminishing benefits, with little left over to save for retirement. See the following statistics. Does the dream survive? Do most Americans still believe they can forge better lives for themselves? Parade surveyed more than 2,200 Americans of whom fully 84% describe themselves as belonging to the middle class, regardless of where they live, living costs are higher in some regions, or the size of their household. For this report, we focused on U.S. households earning $30,000, between $30,000 and $99,000 a year. Most of those surveyed describe themselves as married and having a family. More than 64% say they are employed full-time or part-time. Most say they are in reasonably good health and are satisfied religiously or have a satisfying religious or spiritual life. They own a home and at least two cars, and they are able to take vacations. By international, international standards, they live a life of prosperity. Yet behind this prosperity is a growing unease. Half of the employed respondents say that they've experienced either increased health care costs or a co cut in health benefits over the last three years and 39% have had cuts in their overtime, raises, or bonuses. Almost two-thirds say they live from paycheck to paycheck, and 47% say that no matter how hard they work, they cannot get ahead. More than a third worry about job loss. Richard Oden of Conyers, Virginia, or Georgia, married with five children, worked in the beer industry for 23 years. Last year, he developed pneumonia and required major surgery. When he was unable to return to work by a given date, he says, his company terminated him at age 54, even though he had a perfect attendance record and no performance problems. To help support his family, Odin had to dip into his 401k fund, paying a penalty for premature withdrawal. This was very stressful, he said. Everything had gone up, except wages. Odin has since started his own business, a leadership and personal development consulting firm. His wife just said, works as a representative in the healthcare field. I do believe I will recover financially, Odin says, and that I will really realize a decent retirement. But the traditional American dream? For most American, it's still a dream and a pipe dream. Having drawn on his own retirement fund, Odin knows that saving can be a big problem. In the survey, nearly 83% say that there is not much left to save after they paid their bills. Statistics from the Commerce Department bear this out. The saving rate for Americans is the lowest it has been in 73 years. Self-reliance and sacrifice, most of these interviewed, most of those interviewed display qualities common to American success stories, determination, flexibility, pragmatism, willingness to work hard, and especially self-reliance. Almost three quarters of the middle class respondents surveyed say they take responsibility for their own financial destiny and believe they will succeed or fail based on their own efforts. Still, many are downsizing their dreams. Shelly Comer, 43, of Dos Palos, California, is a divorced mother of three who also takes care of a friend of her oldest child, Michelle. She is going into debt so that, her, so that Michelle can go to college. Shelly has worked her whole life as a receptionist, janitor, preschool teacher, and activities director at a hospital. Recently, she became a registered nurse and now works the night shift in obstet obstetrics at another hospital. Her annual income is $70,377. Michelle, 19, is a freshman at the University of California at Merced. She says she is concerned about the financial burden her education is placing on her family. 
In order to meet our expected family contribution, my mother had to borrow the entire amount of her share. For her part, Michelle earned six small scholarships, two of which are renewable for next year, and took out a federal loan. She also worked 16 hours a week in the financial aid office at the university. Shelly has a retirement plan through the hospital, but I have nothing saved for me, she says. I'm putting it all into the kids so they can succeed in school. Our parents did everything for us, and I hope to do the same for my kids. I don't count on anyone else to help us to get, get to where we want to go. It's all up to me and my family, and I trust in God to help us. Who is responsible? One of the most intriguing results of the parade survey is that 89% of the middle class believes that businesses have a social responsibility to their employees and to the community. Yet 81% believe that, in fact, American businesses make decisions based on what is best for their shareholders and investors, not what's best for their employees. Randy Omark, 55, and Sherry Morris, 58, of Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, husband and wife, are former flight attendants for TWA. Sherry took a buyout in the late 1990s, before American Airlines bought TWA in 2001. After the acquisition, Randy was put on furlough, as were about 4,000 other former TWA flight attendants, and never rehired. After 26 years with the two airlines, his pension was frozen and then taken over by the government. Now he gets $324 a month in payments. Today, despite having a college education, Randy works for nine works for nine dollars an hour finding community jobs for mentally challenged adults. Sherry works for a greeting card company at seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. It used to be that if you stayed with your job, you would be rewarded, said Sherry. Now there's no guarantee. As for retirement, Randy says, eventually we will just downsize everything, sell our house, and move into a smaller one. Is the dream changing? Simone uh, Luvano, 46, and Miguel Gutierrez, 44, run a garage door installation and repair business in Albuquerque, New Mexico. While the business grows $453,000 last year, they took home just $50,000 net to live on. They have a daughter, Marilyn, 7, who is deaf in one ear and goes to a private school that costs $3,600 a year. Simone says that financial stress is part of their lives. It comes from the maybe could be, should be, nature of our business. When the economy is down, people don't buy a new garage door system. The cost of the gas at the pump is a major factor, she adds. When the price of gasoline goes down, business goes up. Had they prepared for retirement? Simone laughs and then replies. The words retirement and vacation are not in our vocabulary. You know that old Tennessee Ernie Ford song, I owe my soul to the company store? We don't think about retirement. They'll have to take me out of here with my high-end tennis on. The American dream is a bygone thing, she adds. It's not the way of lo- way life is anymore. I used to believe I was responsible for my own destiny, but it's not that simple. Now it's faith and fortitude. What can you do? In this and every election year, many politicians rev up emotions that keep voters from focusing on the pocketbook and daily life issues that truly matter. You know what really touches your family in life, the cost of milk, gas, and prescription drugs, the quality of schools, the hope that the government will step in fully prepared to help you save and secure if a disaster hits your neighborhood. Don't leave decision-making and priority setting to zealots who have an ax to grind or to the blindly ambitious people who emerge in every generation. For more than 200 years, our system of government has encouraged power to the people. Be an active citizen.